Oh hey, welcome back. Um, so, got a few more things to show off and um, mostly to do with crafting. But first, let's actually look at some of the shader stuff that I've done for it. So, we have what appears to be a mostly, yeah, that's giving it away, a mostly empty scene, but there are some things that haven't been shown. So let me, yeah. So I've got a shader here. Uh, I've extended the base shader right now to include uh, a transition mode. Uh, the actual movement isn't done in the shader. The movement is done by a script, um, but it only affects the graphics, not the physics. Hence, the you can still see it there. Um, you know, for better or for worse. If I uh, the shader is fully uh, scriptable. Uh, scriptable, controllable, you can tweak a bunch of settings, like change how some of this stuff comes through, uh, you know, change the color, try to make it a bit brighter. Um, right now it's being controlled by time, um, but I can change that to just leave it here, push it up and down. Um, just I'm just controlling it with a slider in the editor at the moment. Um, you know, I can make it bit faster all of this so yeah the whole thing is uh, is actually using a, uh, a uh, an alpha clip so if I take this graphic here the thing that's sitting on turn this off you should be able to see that it's you know still actually not seen um, the actual offset where it is might not a hundred percent line up there's still still some slight offsets and I'm not a hundred percent sure where they're coming from but anyway it does use the bounding box of the graphic to do this all right, let's turn that off. Um, it also, so the main thing is this is supposed to be for fabrication and you know crafting new objects. And you know, so I've mostly tested with small objects, but I did test with some larger objects, something that's a bit more complicated. So I had to create some new, uh, new UI for the buttons, new physical UI because these things needed to fade in. The text on an object still needs some work. Um, I thought I had it working, but I don't have it working. And I'm like, I think I need to figure out a better solution anyway. Uh, when I'm, I mean the text here, like capacity processing, activate, because um, those things don't, you know, they're, they're a text mesh pro uh, element, not a shader I'm controlling. So I still need to figure out the best way of handling those being brought into the scene. But I don't have too many of them. And at the moment, I'm not crafting anything this big. Um, I do like how it appears flat surface. You can kind of see it come through. Um, a lot of it still needs some tweaking and, uh, you know, more particle effects really, but um, sort of the basis of it. Let's turn that off. Um, so it also supports fully all the other elements, all the other uh, visual effects happening on top of everything else. You know, the object itself can be rotating and moving. Uh, because the actual clipping happens through a a world plane, um, so this ob any object can actually be rotated in whatever angle they need to be, um, and have any other effect they need to be having to actually come through, um, and it just seamlessly kind of handles it. Um, it's not terribly efficient. I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to claim any of this is terribly efficient, but. Um, it is control the script that controls it does revert everything back to like not using the transitions once it's done so there's a few shader variants now to handle uh different uh, kinds of different kinds of transitioning it's trying to think of the words um so you know the whole part there where it has the whole alpha clip and all that going on uh is not there once the shader once the effect is done so should only be less efficient for the handful of objects that are actually in use. So let's actually have a look at the object that will be making use of it. So we've got this fabricator here. It is still in progress and has taken me way longer than it should have to get to work, uh, mostly because of an overly complicated, but fun, still fun to put together power system. So 
the whole power system, including everything in the ship that it's using, has been sort of revamped. You know, now objects have a whole knowledge of internal and external power. Do object, objects will know if they will supply power? Um, you can see here, you know, the guns and the engines have an output of negative five. So that's all changed as well. But at the moment, negative five, but usage is zero. And that's because they're not actually on. So we should be able to do that. And yeah, usage five. We can scroll back up and see available 15 now used five. Uh, and the actual power supply should be in there. Yeah, 20. And also the power supply knows that it's been used five, which means if there are multiple power supplies, they will know which ones are delivering how much power. They won't know to what. I didn't want to go down that path, but I wanted to at least have it that each individual power supply knew how much they were in use. Uh, okay, you can see a small fabricator down there is uh, also here. Yeah, all the names for everything. <laughs> still need some work um, but yeah so this is sitting here not doing anything at the moment but it does need a couple of objects put in um, one a few are already installed uh, in here is the energy manifold which is a big triangular thing uh, down here is a mini storage unit that is currently empty small solid storage unit here's the the other regular one it's sitting partially in the floor that's all right Anyway, um, and then here is a battery compartment, and here is a little battery. Um, doesn't, it's got a slight effect on it, which probably means when we plug it in, we'll see how much charge is in it. We see that pops up just a little bit. There's a little bit of charge in there. And all the status changes here, and now this turns on. So you can see the power system for the fabricator itself says, it knows that it has internal power, it has external power. The energy manifold will use two units of power and the small battery can output five units of power. But since nothing is happening, it's just going to sit there. Um, do I know why I did this? Did I do something silly like move the graphic and not the actual... Is it still sitting up here? Oh, yeah. I moved the graphic instead of the actual unit. That's that's why that's over there. Uh, hold on. Doop, doop, doop. See, this is the prop. I really need to turn a lot of these things into prefabs because if they were prefabs and then I tried to move them, I would move everything instead of just moving the graphic, which is very silly. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. Well, I just detached the energy manifold. Well, there we go. Put it back in. Come on. There we go. You get back in there. Um, and now I have. Yep. There we go. It's actually over here, and it always was. <laughs> Just the graphic that I'd moved. I wanted it to be in a convenient location. There we go. So now that's all connected up. Uh, so let's actually try and fabricate something. Um, so you can see the first thing it says is battery charging. You see. There's actually charging up the internal battery first. Okay, now this starts fabricating. You can see the internal storage actually has some stuff in it. Once it finishes, the internal storage is empty again. So there's a few things going on here. And there we go, now we have a new energizer coil. And the battery was used, but it didn't use all of it, thankfully. So, several things. Let's, let's make something else. There we go, battery charging. It's using five units of power. Now, the small battery is outputting two. If we come back over here, available is still 15 and used five. There we go, that finished and that didn't change. So, turn that, turn that back off. So, quite a few things happening, obviously. Um, so I wanted to make it that in, like in universe, you wouldn't want to have it that the fabricator can ever be disrupted partway through fabricating. So there is an internal battery in there, uh, along with the internal storage in there, which means once the, once the resources have been taken out of this and put into the internal storage, you can pop that off and take it somewhere else. Not that fabrication takes that long anyway. Um, and you should be able to turn off the power uh, for the whole ship, and this will still run to completion, you know, finish the fabrication. And once it's done, it will be like, well, 
I need to charge up the battery again, but I don't have an external power source and then it won't work. So I've got, I've got lofty ideas. Let's just make a plasma coil while we're waiting in there, charging up the battery. Shink. Um, I've got lofty ideas of having it that uh, if you don't have a battery in there, um, you can force a safety override and then if you do lose charge part way through that like maybe the whole thing can go wrong and you don't want that to happen uh you know if your fabricator gets you know matter that's being materialized and recombined loses power part way through bad things will happen like it'll explode or damage stuff um you know <laughs> something something like that um I haven't entirely figured that out, but uh, that's part of the reason. That, or entirely, it's just there for decorative, you know, sort of cosmetic purposes, really, that you could just be like, great, cool, I have this whole um, system in place, and there's just some in-universe explanation for like, well, yes, an engineer wouldn't want to have it, that this thing could accidentally turn off, um, you know, so they install the battery and then the battery itself is a power supply so in theory we could use it for something else or we could get a different battery like a bigger one perhaps you know something that needs a long time to fabricate actually needs a bigger battery or a different fabricator to work um, also because it is checking all the resources of these things um, if you install the battery that's already fully charged and if this internal storage unit already has all the resources it needs it will just work straight away it won't rely it won't need any external uh resources or power to work at least the first time um let's make another chamber stand here and watch power system changes Ooh, there's not enough resources no no we used up all our resources well oh yeah complains check for resources not enough resources in connected storage uh, but the battery did get charged, so that's good. Um, well, the, all processes are currently all invisible because they're partially in a limbo of transitioning. Uh, I can turn them on again, I think. There we go. Boop. Uh, but yes, in theory, those things can all be connected up to the storage. You fill it up, plug it into this. Bada bing, bada boom. You can make new, make new things, fabricate new stuff. Um, this monitor here is actually what I'll turn this off. The distract. This monitor here is actually what I want, or at least something similar to this monitor, maybe a little plain, um, is what I want to actually interact. You know, something where you can be like, "Great, here are all the options," and just be like, you know, a big old graphic here, maybe some really basic text, and then like a big old next forward, or maybe a simple grid here, or just like it has to be really big buttons. Um, but some way of being like, great, there are 10 different options that you can fabricate. Here are the resources they'll need. Yep, pick that. Um, I also have an idea of a queue. Um, I don't know why it says one. Oh yeah, because there's one trying to fabricate right now. Duh. Um, I had a uh, whole idea of a, a, a queuing system. You could just queue up everything. Um, but then how do you clear this? And I was thinking maybe there could be a little arm that comes out and just pushes whatever is on top off onto the floor um just so you can just be like great i just want to make uh, 10 energizer coils and you queue up 10 and then just knocks them all off into a pile over there um because that could be ridiculous um yeah but uh maybe i'll do that later <laughs> i've got a lot of other little things to do first but anyway um this i guess this is the start of understanding the whole uh whoops see ya um <laughs> this is the start of understanding sort of crafting loop um gotta figure out why that disappeared still got some shenanigans involved with the whole fact that uh when i attach things i need to go in and out of layers for interactivity and collisions and whatnot and uh i think some of some of it still doesn't get moved over correctly anyway that's another problem. It's probably not as complicated as this ridiculous power system I've built. Um, anyway, see you in the next one.